All right, let's continue then with our conversation from yesterday as we look at the State Capture Commission's final installment. Advocate Kevin Malunga is back and he's the former Deputy Public Protector as well as the Academic Head of Law at Regenesis Business School. Yesterday we spoke and uh, I was asking you if this report will live up to the expectations if you think that over one billion rand was worth it. And look at the product. Are you happy? It's a lot of pages, uh, but I mean, uh, you know, printing, if you go to a printing shop, that's not one billion rand, what one billion rand gets you. <laughs> uh, but on a more serious note, I think uh, uh, the information is a lot. I, I, I still cannot justify the expenditure though. Mm -hmm. uh, but that said, I think there's been a lot of work done, um, uh, especially if you look at the 200 pager on recommendations, um, that, that, that is a very useful amount of information uh, but my position has always been even when I was in the space when I did investigations uh, time is of the essence mm. speed mm. so they've given uh, the guys who are implicated in this too much time to to squirrel away money to to spend to hide to to escape the country as you know they are, they are, they are fugitives as well so that's that's the biggest challenge uh, so really Listening to you, then it sounds like, um, you know, because we've seen in previous installments where they were saying that the monies that must be recovered, for example, must be given a portion to some of the whistleblowers. That may not happen because if we're still giving them enough time to hide the money, there might be nothing to recover. Yes. So it, it, it depends now whether you have any dumb criminals left. <laughs> and I use the word dumb advisedly. Uh, remember, there are asset forfeiture laws in the country, quite rigorous. There's an asset forfeiture unit, uh, also under the, within the ambit of the NPA, which has to actualize and bring this report to life. Mm. Uh, but I just found that generally this whole thing was at a chameleonic pace. Even, uh, you know, the move towards the commission and etc. I have the highest regard for, for Raymond Zondo. You know, I was one of the people who were integral in, cre in the creation of the Office of the Chief Justice. We, we wrote those documents, creating the office from scratch. So I, I, I don't care about what people say. I think he's a very fit and proper person for that position. Uh, but what, I, what I, I can say is that people have been given too much time to, to, you know, to hide things. Uh, for example, when the Guptas were no longer bankable, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, the banks had frozen accounts and, and, and kicked them out of their banking system. Uh, nothing was happening to them then. So I think one of the biggest um, missing questions at this point uh, is capture of law enforcement, capture of uh, SAPs, NPA at the time, uh, etc. Those were institutions were also, for lack of a better word, in one way or the other captured. Mm -hmm. Because then they would work like chameleons. Some things would sit on, on, de on, on desk and gather uh, dust. So the question is, the current people in charge of these agencies, will they do the same? And their pronouncements so far are very good. They're saying they're going to go ahead. But back to what we spoke about yesterday, and I have to insist that this is a continuation from yesterday, uh, that you, 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 you've got to be very strong on forensics. Mm. Uh, so it's mm. not enough to say Arthur Fraser this, Lucky Montana that, or so and so that, uh, and get excited about the news. You've got to have, if you're going to, to, to pin any of those people down for anything, you've got to prove that. That's the nature of criminal law. And looking at the report then now, because it does make, um, you know, recommendations and there is, of course, that special section where you just want to see the recommendations only you can. Yes. Does it make a strong enough case in terms of forensics to link the people it says must be, um, you know, held accountable or is it simply just about investigate further, investigate further and we may not see this go anyway? I, I think they have and, and I must admit, as I indicated yesterday, that when they started, they asked me, what, what do we do? And I said, forensics, mm. go, go, go strong on proof and, and forensic capability. So I suspect that there is also quite a lot of material that is boxes and boxes and boxes. I remember when they came to us when I was still in that system, they, we gave them boxes as well. Uh, so I can imagine now they've got truckloads of, mm -hmm. of, of information. So, so there's more than enough to work with. So, you know, 
to use basketball terminology, it's a slam dunk case for many of those things. Uh, so does the NPA, though, have the capacity to be able to go through all these boxes that were handed over to the commission and now are going to be possibly handed over to them in order to carry this forward and ensure that there's people behind bars? I would certainly hope for so because they hire people based on competence. The, uh, they've got a very capable prosecutor pro program, the way they train prosecutors. I, I think generally the NPA has had good structures in place. You know, uh, uh, they, 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 for years now, I think since the days of Menzi and, and, and the other uh, uh, heads of the, they really have had good systems in place. I think where they've been dropping the ball is these high profile things. And I think the high profile things has probably been largely due to political interference, mm -hmm. a, a lack of a, an appetite to, to deal with them. So now that the political will is there, uh, as we were just watching the president's clip, where he must really walk the talk and say, look, I'm not just talking here. Uh, this is something that I, 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 I I, um, and of course, he is in, in some small way fingered himself to say you didn't do anything in, 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 when you were deputy president. And I, I, I sort of get that politically, not legally. Legally, I don't get it. He obviously had an obligation. Politically, obviously, he wouldn't have been, pre he would have been fired <laughs> because the pre pre president has a very strong prerogative to fire the deputy president. He doesn't have to explain himself. So that's what's what, that is definitely was what was, was going to happen. So I suppose then, uh, as I'm listening to you, is that uh, because the report does say that he should have done more um, and he needed to do more. But when he was speaking in the commission, he almost painted a picture of um, a deputy president who really had no choice but to kind of watch things happen and simply allow that process to try and maybe fix it later. If he had stuck his head out, he wouldn't be president today. They, he would have been fired. And of course, the political dynamics within the party would have kicked him out of that. So I think he had, he had to buy his time uh, and watch um, uh, have a, a bit of an ostrich syndrome and dig his head in the sand and, and not, pretend not to see some things. Otherwise, so now the question is, does he do the same again? Because Which is where I was going to go, yes. because what mm -hmm. does it then do for him now? Because mm -hmm. there are still detractors, mm -hmm. uh, some, of, some of, of, of whom are still within the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the ANC itself, who are not convinced that he should be there. And there's mm -hmm. still quite a lot of divisions we see within the ANC. So does he continue to bury his head or simply make sure that all these recommendations are implemented? Well, this report presents a political tightrope for the president. <laughs> Remember, he's, there's an elective conference coming up. So while we're talking about the legal frameworks and so forth, we, we can't ignore the fact that uh, the delegates who will elect, uh, some of them are still on the other, uh, they are part of the implicated, and some of the guys uh, even uh, at some point, I, don't, I haven't last ch checked recently who's chairing the portfolio committees in parliament, but some of those uh, characters were also chairing portfolio committees. And the, the, the report specifically says Parliament's oversight uh, mechanism and, and, and ability must be reviewed. Mm. So it's almost like you're putting a, uh, you're putting a, a, a cat uh, in charge of, uh, of milk, you know, mm. to guard the milk. And, you, know, you, know, you know what happens when, when we, we let cats guard, guard the milk. And South Africans mm. are eager um, post these reports that we've seen up to mm. now part six to see people in orange overalls. Um, you know, being found guilty and spending some time in jail for this. But it won't be as simple because those who are implicated as well do have rights. Don't well, they? absolutely. And I said that yesterday. That was one of my uh, the points before we saw this report. Uh, um, and of course, especially the, 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 the last installment talks about the state security agency, the, in, in, in sh the shenanigans that happened there. And for a very long time, and I think even Mufamadi in his, in mm. his uh, mm. uh, report alluded to some of these things. There's been abuse of that whole thing of state security, needs to know, etc. all those fancy terms that are used to abuse taxpayer uh, funds. And I suspect that even right now, that some of the things they'll say, no, 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 you can't, you can't do, you can't look at this because this is top secret, etc. Mm -hmm. So there's that cycle of abuse. And, I, and my understanding is that 
the strength of South Africa's constitution of 1996 is that's one of the most transparent and one of the most open constitutions in the world. Now, uh, and, and, and transparency is at the center even of law enforcement and investigations. How then, um, you know, going forward, do the courts, if maybe this is taken on review by those who are unhappy with what came out of the mm. state security agency's uh, evidence, for example, mm. how do the courts then begin to balance what should be top secret and what should be out there? Because as you say, they will argue that. But at the same time, we are concerned when we see money in bags, money in boots, mm -hmm. and simply just being withdrawn from the state to simply do some dubious work. Yes, I think the mantra, uh, based on your question, the mantra that has come from uh, the judges, Judge Zondo himself, Justice Zondo himself, uh, the president, and all the other people, uh, opposition parties, everyone keeps on saying never again, right? So I, I would like to believe that people would like to believe, would like to have that feeling that never again will state security be used as a ruse to loot and milk t taxpayers. So I think the courts will have to develop some chutzpah and strength to say, look, uh, we don't care about your things. Yes, so state security is a very important uh, function all over the world. That's why you've got uh, all these agencies in every country mm -hmm. to, to secure a state. But it's not an excuse to loot the public purse, which is exactly what has been happening here. So it's going to have to need a very strong and brave uh, law enforcement uh, cap capability, investigations, the hawks. But they don't have a lot of time. I think that's one of the biggest challenges. I think a lot of them just are very chameleonic in their, in their pace. They, uh, you know, uh, and, and that doesn't really help things. And so at the same time, because you've, uh, you, you know, the, the report also touches on that um, high expert panel report, which spoke about the factions in the ANC and how they were at play to the weakening of what we see now happening at the State Security Agency. Mm. Those findings there were not implemented. Fast forward to this, how then do South Africans begin to trust that what they are seeing now being laid bare again as to what is happening within the state security agency is going to then be implemented if that particular report in and itself, which is also quoted, was never implemented? Well, that goes back to the issue of, uh, uh, you know, electability of, 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 of politicians and, and, and the public trust. So as all this comes to the fore. This is what results in a trust deficit between the people and the state. And usually people uh, show their, their, their dissatisfaction by voting with their feet at the elections. So this is a, a warning shot, I think, probably for the ruling party to say, look, if you don't fix these things, next time you're just going to keep on shaving and shaving and shaving and shaving your, your, your vote. Um, and I think uh, one of the, the policy head alluded to that at some point. So at least they know that. Mm. Uh, and that's how, as I said yesterday, the political you know, liberation movements all over the continent, whether you're talking about uh, uh, UNIP in Zambia, you're talking about ZANU-PF uh, in Zimbabwe, you're talking about uh, uh, one or two others, uh, you know, how they move from being loved and trusted by the people to being something that people just resent and eventually they are, they're voted out. It's these kind of issues that are at the core of, of people's uh, frustrations. And also, of course, as we spoke yesterday, what is also going to be at, at the heart of this is mm. that he also, the Chief Justice, needs to come out and tell us what is happening with those tenders in his office. But let's see then um, what happens there. Oh, yes. The integrity aspect is very important. And I think one of the things I remember when we were drafting this, the documents in 2011, and I was in there, uh, firstly as a researcher, and I became Chief of Staff at some point, we, we were really, uh, the whole point behind the creation of an office of the Chief Justice was so that it is the, the, the judiciary is insulated from the shenanigans and the, and the weaknesses that come with being part of the executive. And clearly, since then, they've just been, uh, it's been Wild West. You know, it's no, not, not just that uh, case management tender. With case management, uh, I've dealt the case management space. There's so many uh, uh, possible providers of this kind of thing. It's not, a, it's not a niche area. So I think he will have to clean his own house so that at least when he pronounces 
he has some sort of credibility. All right, let's see then what comes out of those tenders and everything. But thank you so much for coming in Thanks. again and giving us the yeah. second installment yes. to post this report. That was Advocate Kevin Malunga, yes. former Deputy Public Protector and Academic Head of Law at Regenesis Business School.